iRacing features four licensed categories of racing for its members to take part in. You've got the road category, which involves everything from GT cars, open wheel cars, and just about everything that runs on a road course. Oval is made up of your NASCAR categories in lower divisions, such as the Legend cars and Arca cars, all the way up to your trucks, Xfinity, and Cup cars. Dirt Oval is the crazy sideways driving sprint cars and late models where you are balancing off the walls and throwing dirt in the faces of your rivals in sprint races. These three categories all feature large participation numbers almost around the clock. However, the fourth and final category of racing is often a struggle to get any significant grid outside of soft races. Dirt Road is the licensed class that covers the basis for both Rallycross and the pro off-road racing trucks. These classes feature sideways action, massive jumps, and heat races for quick fire drama. It is a licensed class that does have a little bit of everything for everyone. But when I speak to people about why there is such an incredibly low participation around these categories, the answer is often either that they struggle to understand how to go fast in one of these cars, or that the driving standards are relatively garbage. So my goal today is to try to help people better understand the driving standards, the driving style, and also some tips and tricks to help you guys moving up the order. So the first thing, and it's something I need to say right off the bat, sliding the car into every corner is not the fastest way to get around a rallycross or off-road racing truck track. It does look cool, especially if you have your Ken Block livery on, but you don't see GT3 cars going 90 degrees through corners of the Nordschleife. The same applies here when on tarmac sections of the circuit. So many times I have seen drivers in rookie rallycross races or the Pro 2 trucks ripping the handbrake on the corner for maximum rotation. While you will have incredible entry speed into a corner, your minimum speed through the corner will be hurt significantly, as will your exit traction, and all the while, you are going to be way more inconsistent with your racing line. So just driving the car as straight as possible should always be your goal. Your best acceleration happens when the car is going forward and running straight, so this needs to be in your mind the entire lap. In the dirt sections, this applies too. Keeping the car tracking as straight as you can is essential. However, the fastest line on a fresh track in the dirt does often involve a little bit of slip angle in the car. As the track evolves and you get further into the feature, the required slip angle and sideways nature of the car to go fast in the dirt lessens, and eventually you can actually get away with driving the dirt sections of the circuit as if they were tarmac as long as you stay within the worn lines. But we'll talk more about that a little bit later. In the dirt sections of the circuit, it is critical to be managing your wheel spin the entire time. Being as gentle and smooth on the throttle as you can is half the battle in the dirt. Wheel spin is your enemy, so do whatever it takes to limit this. It's not uncommon to see the top drivers in Rallycross of the Lucas Oil Pro Trucks to be short shifting quite a lot. At Phoenix for the Rallycross Pro Qualifiers just two weeks ago, it was a regular thing for me to be entering the long sweeping right hander in second or third gear, but exiting the corner close to the fifth or even sometimes sixth gear. With that said, what surface you are driving on makes a big difference. In iRacing, the grippiest surface you can be on is of course tarmac, so if there is the option to use tarmac somewhere, absolutely go for it. Gravel is the slipperiest surface on the racetrack compared to any other, so you want to limit your time spent on this surface. If you can find some grass, some concrete, or even tarmac like we said, these options will always provide more grip and benefit your lap times if you can work them into a suitable racing line. Yet, throughout the race, just like in dirt oval racing, you'll need to change how you are driving as the track develops. Underneath the dirt is tarmac. As the cars continue to drive over the dirt, much of it is thrown up and displaced off the racing line. This means as more laps get turned, there is less dirt on the surface of the track, and eventually the tarmac underneath begins to get exposed. Tarmac, as we talked about, is grippier than the dirt, so ensuring you are staying in this worn racing line is critical. It is straightforward to spot once you know what to look for, as shown here by a much darker line in the dirt surface. In the dirt road discipline, this is critical to keep an eye out for, as lap times can speed up by up to 2 seconds on a fully developed circuit. If you fall off this racing line, you can lose an incredible amount of time. 
Here is an example from earlier in the pro qualifying series where I run slightly wide through turn two at Sonoma and get offline into the dirt. And you can see how far behind me the trailing car was, yet can effortlessly drive past as they were on the worn racing line. All of this now leads us onto the driving standards involved in Rallycross. And yes, in the grand scheme of things, Rallycross is the contact sport of motorsport. But with that said, people often assume that punting people and outright pushing people out of the way is the way to go, and this is far from the truth. Bump and runs are allowed here in Rallycross, but it must be done not to throw your opponent more than one and a half car widths wide, or else it will be considered a punt. If they get turned or spun around, that is also a punt, and you'll find yourself in hot water very quickly. Whilst bumping and banging door mirrors in Rallycross is more accepted, Anyone who races clean and fairly and makes passes about contact will always be a likes driver. So please, don't be that guy who takes everybody out. If you do find yourself getting punted sideways, the good news about the Ford and Volkswagen Beetle is that with these cars being all-wheel drive, you can hold the handbrake and plant your throttle to the floor to bring the car back around as if it was a front-wheel drive car. This is super useful in correcting some significant sideways moments. Sadly, the Subaru is unable to do this with its handbrake configuration, however, so this could be a factor when it comes to choosing which car you race. But that said, the balance of performance in Rallycross right now is very equal, and in the trucks, obviously all the cars are identical. I'm going to wrap things up here guys, but if you did learn something new, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below, and if you have any more questions, I'm more than happy to answer them as well. I'm Bo Albert, stay awesome everyone.